iPhoto is probably going to do everything that most of us ever need as far as digital photography goes. That is, if you're a point and shoot photographer. But Apple also has a wonderful tool for advanced photographers called Aperture. And it brings all of the convenience of iPhoto to the professional and people who take their photography seriously. Aperture is very deep. It's sort of a photo philosophy and an application all wrapped into one. Provides us with a host of powerful organizational tool and some key editing tools as well. Now, if you're a photo hobbyist or a pro photographer, you take lots of photos. Thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pictures. And those photos are big. You don't take low resolution shots in order to save space if you're a pro photographer. And chances are all those large files aren't going to fit onto a single computer. So you need to store them on more than one device, like external drives or DVDs. High-end digital cameras also take pictures in a format called Camera Raw, which is basically an uncompressed file. These pictures are big when you're talking file size, and they contain a massive amount of information. For convenience, most point-and-shoot cameras and photo applications prefer to work in a compressed format, like JPEG. To the naked eye, JPEG files look just as good as RAW files do, but the file has been compressed, and some of the information has been lost in the file. And to pro photographers, that makes a difference. One of the cornerstones of Aperture is that you can work with your files in camera raw format and the image is never compressed until you move the file out of the software program, say uploading it to the web. This way you're always dealing with the best possible quality on the file. Now I said these files are big and we've got lots of them. So we also need a strategy for storing them in multiple places. Unlike a personal photo library, a pro collection could never live on a single storage device. There's just not enough room. Again, Aperture is designed to offer total control over our collection, keeping track of our photos over multiple devices. Let us have a look. When we first open Aperture, it looks very similar to iPhoto because it does a lot of the same things that iPhoto does. It gives us the same kind of control over our photos, but in a much more massive scale. Along the top are different controls for starting different projects and albums and doing things like quickly creating thumbnails of our photos that we can upload to the internet if we're doing a website. Those sorts of tools are all available. It's all about giving a pro photographer the tools that they're going to use every day. The next set of tools are for dealing with the individual image that we have in front of us. Cropping it, rotating it, doing some patch repair, just fixing up small blemishes within the photo, red eye reduction, and then some content tools, which I'll talk about in a moment. Then we also have the ability to do some basic adjustments to the photo, adjusting the brightness and contrast. Now a key thing about Aperture is we're dealing in camera raw format, as I mentioned before. When we make any adjustments to the photo, we're not actually making an adjustments to the photo itself that we're working on, but instead to a copy of the photo. And actually we're just tracking the changes because we never want to change the fact that we're in camera raw. We never want to lose that original data. So what happens is every time we make an adjustment, we're just creating kind of an audit trail of the changes we make to the photo. So you can always move forward and back through any of the changes you've made to any photo. It's like having a film negative that's never changed and you only work on the prints. You only make changes to the print so you never lose that original data which is a big safety net for a photographer. You can never, it's total non-destructive editing effectively is what's happening. So you have adjustments here for adjusting the brightness and color and contrast of the photo and then we also have a tool here for managing all of our metadata. Metadata is even more critical to the pro photographer because if you're taking a 500 shots at a wedding, you want to be able to capture all that information about the wedding. Say this is the Donner Party wedding and adding copyright notice and credits and all those sorts of things into the metadata. You can do that through this interface, but if you're doing 500 photos at a time, you don't want to do each individual photo. So you also have the ability here using these tools above to do something called lifting and stamping metadata, which will copy the common information from one photo to another photo. So you've got a lot of nice additional features built in here as well. As we scroll through the thumbnails, we find something which is really common, which is we've got lots of pictures of one common theme. If you're taking a wedding, you've got a whole bunch of portraits of the bride, for example. And here we've got a whole bunch of pictures of Emma on the beach. So finally, you're going to find one photo that's kind of the star photo of this whole stack of photos, this whole group of photos. And you can do that by zooming in and take a look at this loop. 
you can go in and you can check on how your focus is. You can check on any one area. Isn't that a cool tool for being able to dive into the photo? That's one of my favorite tools right there is the loop. So once you've determined that this is the best photo of the whole lot, but you've got all these other additional photos of here on the beach, you can do something called creating a stack of photos, which gives you a lot more control as you browse through your image library. Just by shift-clicking on all of the photos, I can then group them together, and then using this tool up here, I can create something called a stack. When I stack the photos, what happens is they're all put one on top of the other. And if I close the stack, then all of the photos here in my browser are stacked underneath that photo. So you see there's 19 photos underneath it. So as I'm browsing through, I just see the one beach shot. It allows me to navigate my way through my photos that much quicker. You know, if you take your photos very seriously, Aperture is a tool that you're going to quickly find indispensable. It'll organize and protect your investment for years to come. It is one of those applications that you install and then almost instantly becomes a killer app, a software package that you find you can't live without. At least that's the word from my peeps on the street.